Thank you, DeAndre. Thank you, everybody, for joining. So uh, today we're we're going to have a, a discussion about one of the key programs that we created in in the CARES Act to try to ease some of the economic burden that people are feeling from uh, the the economic shutdown. Uh, we're going to talk about the the IRS economic impact payments, uh, which are. I guess more typically referred to as stimulus payments, the $1,200 checks uh, that are available to many Americans um, through, again, through the CARES Act. Uh, those payments started being distributed last month uh, to those who typically receive their income tax refund through direct deposit. Uh, but our office has received a lot of feedback from constituents that uh, some of those payments have been delayed or that they have a unique circumstance that precluded them from receiving the, the payment in the first round. So today's forum is a, a chance to get additional info from the IRS about uh, the status of that program and to help clarify how uh, you'll receive those funds uh, and what might be holding up if you haven't already. Um, so to help us, we're joined uh, by Kate Hanyadi with the IRS. Kate is the IRS is congressional liaison for New Jersey. When constituents come to my team with IRS related issues, uh, it is Kate uh, that our office works with to get them resolved. Um, since Congress authorized these economic impact payments, we've been working very closely with her to ensure that uh, everybody gets the payments that uh, they're owed. So I hope that today's forum will be helpful in, in clarifying uh, any questions that, that folks uh, still have uh, out there. Now, if you have a, a special situation that uh, Kate can't address with you here today, the conversation isn't over. So please just leave your contact information and the details of your situation in the chat feature of, of Zoom. And my staff will uh, follow up with you individually and see if we can help you get the issue uh, resolved. The, the same is true if, if somehow we don't get to your question uh, on this call. Just leave us the information we need to contact you and our office will follow up. Uh, so with that, I'm very pleased to turn the mic and the camera over to uh, Kate to say a few words uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll go to questions. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I know there's a lot of questions, so uh, I, I'm sure we want to get to those. I do want to say that even at the IRS, we are, we are learning new information almost daily. Um, and we, there are a lot of questions that we are getting that we are waiting for answers on as well. So um, it's, it's important to us that if you do have a question that we can't answer, we, you know, we, we are trying to take those questions to, to the person <laughs> that can answer them and, and then we will get back to you um, eventually. So please, please bear with us and, um, and that's about it. So hopefully, hopefully I can answer all your questions today, but, but we'll see. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, DeAndre, over to you uh, to start us off. Yes, thank you so much. Um, just a reminder for everyone on the call, if you have a question, just use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. I um, know it's a little different. We've been bouncing back and forth a little bit between our formats to see what works best for everyone. Um, but just use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. Just include your name and contact information. So we may follow up if it's a personal situation. Um, our first question, are tax refund deliveries impacted by the stimulus payment? Well, the answer to that is they should not be. Um, they are, they're separate. They're, they're, they function separately. Um, they are processed separately. But I will say that if, if you haven't received a refund that you're expecting yet for say a 2019 tax return, um, then that likely means you won't be getting the stimulus payment yet either because we are, that means we're still in the process of, of finalizing the, the return and, and getting the refund money out. So, so they don't really interact, but, but it's likely that the refund is a good indication that you're, 
return has been processed, which has to happen before the stimulus payment can go out. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, our next question. If I owe money to the IRS, will I still receive the ESP? Yes, uh, the economic impact payment is not going to be held up by any debts owed to the IRS. In fact, um, I think all federal debts are will not be used to offset the payment will not be offset by any debt other than child support if you if you do owe back child support then the stimulus payment will be taken for that but that's that's the only reason yeah deandre i think we've heard um uh, some stories about um banks potentially um uh, or other institutions uh taking payments for, for debt collection. And, and uh, we followed up and a lot of congressional offices have followed up on that. None of that is supposed to be happening. If you're entitled to the, the stimulus payment under law, then, well, you're entitled to it. And there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So anybody here is any, um, anything like that, that going on? Uh, and I don't mean second or third hand, but if it's happened to you or, or somebody you know, please let us know and we'll, We'll get right on it. Thank you, Kate and Tom. Um, next question. One person in my household has already received their check and the other hasn't. Why might that be? And how can we, how can I reach out to the IRS to receive my check as well? Well, there are a lot of factors that could play, um, be in play here. So for example, if, one member of the household has filed um, their 2019 return and maybe it hasn't been processed yet, but the other person perhaps um, filed sooner or, or maybe they got their stimulus based on the 2018 information. Um, you know, there are, there are various reasons um, that, that the stimulus payment might not have gone out yet maybe the IRS doesn't have deposit information on file for one member of the household, but they do for the other member, um, in which case, you know, the direct deposit is the fastest way to get the stimulus. So if someone's waiting on a paper check, that might take longer than, than someone who is just waiting for a deposit. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, we're switching over to our live questions. Those are just a few examples of questions that our office gets um, frequently asked. Um, we'll now go to the live question. Our first question will come from Eileen. Eileen, can you hear us? I can. Can you see me? Yes. Okay, so my question is about the additional $600 to unemployment payments. Um, Kate, thank you for joining us. Uh, can you explain um, how that determination is made? Because I too, in my household, one person did get that $600 on top of their unemployment and the other did not. So I'm curious to know how those determinations were made. So that's probably, well, it's probably more a question for me, Kate, or unless you wanna. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> Because uh, that's not a that's not an IRS program. That's um, that's unemployment insurance, and and Congress uh, decided uh, that in the CARES Act that we would um, provide an additional six hundred dollars uh, a week uh, for folks who are uh, who lose their job or are furloughed because of the coronavirus. that a person might be qualified for. And we also expanded the universe of people who would be qualified. So self-employed uh, people, independent contractors, gig workers uh, now qualify, um, including for that $600 uh, additional payment. The system, as you know, is completely overwhelmed. Uh, the states uh, uh, run the, uh, the, the unemployment compensation system, even if it's federally funded and they were not ready for the massive influx of people who were applying. And they also weren't ready 
um, to deal with uh, the newly qualified folks, those independent, uh, those self-employed people who are applying for the first time. Um, you know, we, we designed this in a few days and suddenly millions of people are, are applying. It's not an excuse, it's just an explanation. And um, so it's, it's only recently, for example, that the state of New Jersey has begun to uh, process applications from folks in that self-employed category. So that may be, again, I don't know about the specifics of this case, but it may be one reason why um, one person, even one person in a household might have gotten their payment, um, but another person in the household has not because they might have different jobs. One might be working for a company um, uh, and uh, the other may be self-employed. That might be an explanation. Um, but if there's a concern about a particular case, uh, as always, we're, we're willing to, um, to take that on if, if you would like. Great, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question comes live from Ed. Ed, can you hear us? Uh, I can. Oh, I'm unmuted. Good. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Ahead. Okay, so we're, we're finding, as I guess a lot of people, and by the way, Congressman and Kate, thank you very much for, for doing this. Uh, we're finding, as I suspect a number of people uh, have found, that the get my payment thing is, is a little glitchy. Um, perhaps that's an understatement. We've tried a bunch of times to put our information in and it keeps coming back um, saying it doesn't recognize us. Because what we're trying to do is give it our direct deposit information. Um, we're kind of unusual in that We've, we've never really gotten a refund. We always apply our overpayment, if there is one, to the next year's taxes. On the other hand, we collect Social Security, so Social Security should have our direct deposit in information, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. But whenever we try, the, part of the problem is the, the tool asks for information from specific lines on the tax returns. Yet, some of those lines for us are blank. Um, it, it has to do with the, 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 the refunds. For example, it, it asks for, 20, it asks for was, 21A. Yeah, it asks for the, the line on 21A. That's the, that's the amount I want refunded to me. But I don't fill in anything on line 21A because I fill it in on line 22 which is the amount to be applied to my estimated tax. And um, then it, it just, it says, we don't know who you are, it dumps us out, and you can only use the tool twice in any 24 hour period. So I can't keep poking around to try to give it numbers that I like. So I'm frustrated. Well, I, I can certainly understand that. I, I That is very frustrating. Um, and I, you're not alone. I. I right. The, the word glitchy, it, 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 it does apply, but sometimes, sometimes it's not, it's not just a glitch in the system. It, it's just, um, it's just that information doesn't match or, um, or, or in some cases you may not even be able to put in deposit information. It sounds like for you, um, you would be able to, because we don't already have that on file. I would say this particular issue with the refund amount um, is has been identified, and we we were told it was resolved, but it sounds like that is not the case. Um, and also because there was another issue with adjusted gross income, you couldn't put it put zero in for that. Um, if I if I if I may interrupt, yes, in, in as as the as the uh, program has evolved. At first, it simply asked for your refund amount. It's since been revised to talk about your refund or your amount to be credited to taxes or something like that. But it continues to ask for information from a line that has no and, and, and shouldn't have any numbers on my tax return. Well, I, I, 
<laughs> I, I hear you. Um, and I, I'm not sure why, I, I'm not sure what the programming <laughs> changes have been or, or, or if they're planning new ones, but I can say that, that the system is being updated on the day done overnight. Will be able to recognize and and I I guess they're adding um, new questions and new new re information requests such as this particular line. So unfortunately, I I don't know how to advise you at this moment. Um, but as I said, we're getting new information daily, and if you would leave your contact information, then I would be happy to to see if there are updates today or if someone knows when that particular issue might be addressed and I and I'll be happy to get back to you um, when when we know something. Hi. Can, can, I, can you hear me? Yeah, Bart. Yes. Yeah. Um, I had that same issue and I have four zeros at the beginning of my bank account number that no one's ever asked me for. And I finally put it in for the IRS. And then everything went through. If there are any, it's, sometimes it's it needs all those numbers. I mean, maybe helpful to this person. No, that actually, thank you. But that, I I don't think that's where the glitch is. But it, I I there, there's yeah um, the contact information, uh, Kate is um, I, I put it in the chat. Okay. Um, message. Okay. So if they can forward that to you if congress and staff can yes. forward do, that somehow i hope then maybe yes. we'll do okay. it and, great and if i can just pile on here and obviously this is not kate's fault um you're not no, no no she's not designing the website but it is a poorly designed website it, it was a I very mean, in fairness idea. anything put together this quickly is is likely i mean i suspect that we are unusual you know most people either get a refund or they pay taxes the number of people that do what we do is yeah. probably small and it was, it was put together quickly and but you know one i think one of the big complaints is that a lot of different people are getting this payment status not available signal available the first time right. we tried it but but since the first couple of efforts, we we now are able to get deeper into the labyrinth. Uh, but you know, once we put in all the information, it, it, I mean, again, it would be helpful if it would tell us like which line the information doesn't match on, and we could like right. zero in on that. But it just sort, sort of gives you this blanket. Well, some of your information doesn't match. It's your, you figure out which right. one. Payment you know, status not available, but we can't tell you why. Right. Exactly. And, and, and make sure you're guessing with your best guess because you only get a couple tries a day. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and so that's the my information. I did it just, you know, as a test. I got payment status not available, presumably because I don't qualify. Right. My, my salary as a member of Congress is higher than... The, the minimum, um, higher than the maximum, sorry, 75,000. So, but, so I get that, but you get exactly the same um, error message. Effect uh, for your 2019 return yet, or, or a whole host of other reasons. So you, you can't, you can't fix the problem if you don't know what it is. So we've raised uh, those concerns. Um, uh, you know, above, uh, you know, to, to the relevant folks at, at IRS and Treasury as of other members of Congress. And it is, let's just be frank about it, it is very frustrating because this is the point of the website it, it, it is to give people a user-friendly interface to figure out what's going on. And in some people's cases, it's just raising more questions than it answers. Well, and your, your point about processing the returns is is actually a good one because obviously, we put in our 2018 return. We filed our 2019 return by e-file, probably somewhere around March 15th, just before everything hit the fan. Mm -hmm. 
And we have no way of knowing whether that has in fact been processed or not. So we've tried using the tool both ways, putting in the numbers from 2018 and putting in the numbers from 2019, but with no success. Okay. I do want to add, um, there are FAQs specific to the Get My Payment application available on irs.gov. And I know at one point they were, they were explaining some of the error messages in the FAQs. So they, you, don't, you don't get an explanation on the tool, but you, you, know, you might find an answer in the FAQs, uh, which again, kind of frustrating. You gotta cross-reference and, and find it. But, um, but just, just as, a, as a note, there, there might be information there to, to address a specific error message. Um, it might let that, you know. Thank, we, yeah. thank you. We, we, have, we have looked to the facts and they, okay. they, they do have some things that sort of adjust, uh, address that, uh, our situation, but not head on, so. Sure. Well, I, just, just as a, an aside, so you know, my colleagues, there are 10 of us that do this job. We begin our day every day looking at the FAQs. <laughs> To oh, see that, if, yeah, if anything's no, I, been added, because we are we are awaiting answers too. So um, yeah, no, it, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, it's it's tough. It's tough. But you know, by the end of this conversation, maybe maybe someone has has figured out the uh, your particular. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right, DeAndre, any um. Thank you so much. That was a great conversation um, right there. Um, I think that answer a lot of those questions that we had previously submitted to you. Um, I know that kind of encompasses a decent amount of them. Um, another live question that we do have, um, I'll read it out for us. If there are delays in filing taxes, will the money still be there later or might it run out like a PPP program? I, may, I think that question may be targeted more towards you, Tom. Uh, Actually, I think probably both Kate and I would say, no, this is not money that runs out. Uh, th this, is, this is not a, uh, we, we did not appropriate money to cover uh, these, uh, th these payments. So it's not like we appropriated X amount. It, it is in effect an entitlement uh, if you qualify under the law based on your income and your status then you will get the payment. I concur, yes. <laughs> Thank you both. Um, just a reminder for everyone on the call, uh, just please submit any questions we do have to the chat um, and please include contact information. Like I said, if we can get to those questions. Um, our next question, kind of, we kind of hit this a little bit with the last one, but um, I've already signed up for direct deposit from the IRS on the IRS website um, and have not received a check. Um, is there a way to check on that status? Um, I've already received an error message. Is there another alternative to see um, my status on my check? Unfortunately, no. The, the only way to check the status at this point is on the get my payment tool. And so if you can't, um, then you're just kind of playing the waiting game. Uh, I will, and this is not an official IRS um, statement, but I do want to say that at this point, we are not able to basically research individual account issues with these payments at the moment because we are, you know, like most other companies, we, we're operating with a diminished workforce. And so we can't do that right now. However, I think that there are plans that are in place for when, when everyone comes back and we have um, the manpower, we will be able to look into um, to more specific issues. And I, I believe that um, the account access programs that we have will have information, do have information about both um, you know, tax return status, refund status, uh, account balances and and also the economic impact payment as well. Um, so, you know, at some point 
you'll be able to find out how the payment was calculated, um, you know, if where it went, if it when it's coming. Um, that information does exist somewhere. <laughs> so, so it's it's it you know we we will get we will get answers. Um, Thank you, Kate. I do know we have a few more people still joining in the call, so I'm going to open it up again. If there's any questions um, that anyone on the call has, please go ahead and submit them, um, and we will get to those questions. Please include contact information. That's very helpful for us when we are reaching out following the call. Our next question. My husband and I didn't qualify based on our 2018 tax returns. But based on our 2019, we did. We just filed our 2019 return. How do we make sure that we get our stimulus payment? Well, um, you did that. That's that's what you need to do. You need to file your return. Um, that's that's the best way to ensure that a payment will come your way. Um, you know, it's possible that you you know the irs the irs is looking at 2019 first so it you know we're looking to see if a 2019 return has been filed um and this of course applies to to those who have a filing requirement this doesn't apply to people that don't file a tax return uh, the system is kind of different for them the the process so, um, you know, depending on how recently you filed, whether or not you e-filed or, or filed on paper, all of that will impact um, the time frame for, for getting your payment. But that's, that's the best way to ensure that you get an EIP is, is to file a tax return. Thank you. And just to be clear, um, 2019, next... the 2019 information trumps the 2018 information, right? Yes, so... unless, yes, but if, if a payment has already gone out or is scheduled based on 2018 information, okay. then that, that will be, that will be the, the guiding, um, <laughs> that, that will be the criteria that's used. Uh, so if, you know, if you didn't qualify in 2018 and you haven't filed 2019, but you, but you do qualify, then it, you know, the IRS may have already taken a look at the 2018 and said, okay, this person doesn't get it. And so, um, they'll have, it'll cycle back through when, when the 2019 is filed, but yes, and what that, about, the 2019 is the priority. And what about vice versa? Let's say somebody does qualify based on 2018, but they made a little more money in 2019. Um, and they haven't filed their tax return yet. Well, if they haven't filed, then <laughs> so if they haven't filed, then the IRS will use the 2018 information and they will get a payment based on that if they qualify. Uh, Um, not to file uh, 2019 if they don't qualify, but I, I do want to point out that this will all be, these payments are going to be reconciled when you file your 2020 taxes next year. And if you qualify based on 20, you'll get a payment at that time. So if you didn't qualify based on your 2019 income tax return information, you won't be getting a payment right now, but you will get one if if you are otherwise eligible um, eventually if you file next year. Okay, but it, but that won't happen. That's important information, but that won't happen until 2021, presumably. Right, right. Um, which is a little bit late for most people who are in need right now. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Thank you both. Um, our next question is in regards to kind of the, if, uh, if, if a person, receive so just the questions regarding this i'm going to try to um, incorporate this into one question um seeing a delay in payment for people who do receive social security income is this an impact that we can see across the board or how can people that do receive social security income um 
get this check and what can they do to make sure that they receive the check? Okay, so it, there's there's two categories of, of people who get social security income and well, there's more than two, but for our purposes, there are those that file a return and those that don't. So if you file a tax return, then that trumps any information that that is on file with Social Security. So for example, if you have deposit information on file with the Social Security Administration, but you also file a tax return, it doesn't look like the IRS is, is, is looking for your information from SSA. The, the IRS is only getting information from SSA for people that don't file a tax return. So um, I, I think that's an important thing to know at the outset, but if, Checks have begun going out to, to people who receive Social Security income and do not file a tax return. So um, if, if you have someone that, that filed a tax return and, and has Social Security income and they haven't gotten a payment and they're worried because their neighbor who doesn't file but also has Social Security income did get a payment, that's it it's not it's not something to worry about it didn't it doesn't mean that you got skipped over it just means that the fact that you file a tax return is is putting you in a different uh bucket or or in a different line let's say so um payments have begun going out to social security recipients but if if you file a tax return and you didn't get one yet it doesn't mean you're not getting one or that you need to do anything to um you don't need to take any any steps to ensure that you do get one. Thank you, Kate. Yeah. Um, for everyone on the call, again, if you have any questions, please just use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen and please include your name and contact information so we don't get to your questions. Well, as any information, we are recording this call, so any personal information, um, we're trying to stay away from that, um, just out of respect for you and your family's privacy in different situations. Our next question, um, what is the advice for from the IRS in regards to someone who has a relative that, has, that is deceased um, and they still receive a stimulus check? <laughs> While the state is currently in probate, sorry, okay. there's an MP right there. I I love this question because it it has been the most frequently asked question I've had and and my colleagues have had and we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for an answer and just yesterday we got one. So anyone who any let me let me make sure I say this correctly any any individual who receives a payment but was deceased before they received the payment is not entitled to a payment. <laughs> so um, there, there was talk that uh, a, a surviving spouse might be able to keep the money or, or the money would go into a state, an estate, but that is not the case. The IRS now has is asking that that money be sent back um, to the IRS. If, and there are, there are different procedures, obviously, for people that got a paper check versus people that got a direct deposit. And even if you've already cashed the check, um, there's there's a process for that too. So this information is available on irs.gov in the FAQ section. And, um, and, and there also is a list of where to send, um, depending on what state you live in, is dictates where you send your, your payments. Um, and I think for New Jersey, it's gonna go to a Kansas City, um, processing center. So, uh, I if I can I can get that out to you guys if you want to. Um, I can send that out if if you want to make that available on your website or something. But otherwise, um, it is there on irs.gov if if you if you need to know where to send that payment. Thank you, Kate. And just to follow up on that, um, anyone that did have any questions or we did mention that frequently asked questions since that is on the IRS website, um, we will be sending out um, a link to those different resources after this call to everyone that um, did participate today. So be, uh, look out for that in your email in the coming days. Our next question. 
Uh, and this one is for you, Tom. Um, can we see a, will we see another round of payments um, or what can we expect coming in the future from Congress? Uh, all I can say right now is that that's part of the, the conversation. Um, I, I think we may need another round personally because I, I, I don't see us um, uh, recovering from this instantly. Uh, e even if we get to a point with enough testing and contact tracing that, that governors uh, like Governor Murphy can responsibly order uh, a reopening of, uh, of restaurants and businesses and malls and everything else. I, I think most people are going to be very cautious about returning uh, to uh, public activities, uh, to large gatherings. And so I think we are going to be feeling economic pain for some time. So we are discussing a number of ways in, in Congress to extend uh, some of the relief. It may not be in exactly the same form as in the CARES Act. Uh, so I, I can't give you a certain answer, but I can say in my view, it, something will be necessary and, uh, and you will see some of those ideas emerge in the next uh, coronavirus relief bill that goes through the House of Representatives at least uh, in the coming uh, couple of weeks. Thank you, Tom. Um, those are all of the questions that I have. Um, are there any closing comments or thoughts from you, Kate, um, before we kick it over to the congressman for closing remarks? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I, I do want to add um, that just, just FYI, the, there is a taxpayer advocate service that works uh, it's under the IRS umbrella, but it's an independent organization, and they um, they are often able to assist um, with with these kinds of questions. They are not working um, the economic impact payment account questions right now, but but do keep them in mind as an option um, if you're you know if you're having a hard time or if they could they they could um, check your refund status for you. They could they could confirm whether or not your return has been processed, things like that. Um, they are available for that. So if you need if you need them, they are there. Um, they have they they have a, a legislative affairs um, person as well that works with the congressional offices. So uh, do keep that in mind and um, and please do know that we are we hear you and and we we are. We feel the frustration as well, and and we we are trying our very best um, to address all of the issues and to and to help people um, and, and and answer questions. So thank you for having me, and um, <laughs> and and just try to be patient, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Well, look, if there are no more, uh, I just want to thank everybody, and I think I, I will end by making a larger comment about the IRS. Uh, and that is, uh, look, obviously uh, the IRS um, isn't and could not possibly be everybody's favorite government agency, right? Why because, not? <laughs> <laughs> and, but, it's mine. <laughs> it's yours, I know. And, but, but, but wait, wait till, just, just be patient. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna say something on top of that. It's obviously not our favorite because they take our money, right? Nobody loves to pay taxes. And one of the results of that, one of the consequences is that over the years, uh, it's become an easy punching bag for politicians. And Congress has um, repeatedly underfunded the, the IRS in, in recent years. Uh, it, it's just not, you don't run for Congress saying, I wanna give more money to the IRS. But the consequence we're seeing right now that, that we, we desperately need a well-functioning, um, smoothly operating tax agency in our country, um, not just to uh, take our money uh, on April 15th, but to make sure that we get help uh, at moments like this when the government wants to deliver relief to Americans, uh, uh, both individuals and, uh, and to small businesses. Many of us would 
uh, ideally like to run the small business relief program through the IRS as well, because that actually would be very efficient in principle, because you've got all the information um, about how much businesses are earning and how many employees they have. It would be sensible, as many European countries are doing, to run the small business relief program through IRS. But we have starved the institution of money. Um, it is woefully understaffed. And now on top of that, um, IRS staff like Kate have to work from home and, and that creates additional difficulties. Uh, and the country also, uh, the, the treasury loses a lot of money. Um, under these circumstances, ordinary folks still get audited, uh, but uh, well-organized, well-resourced tax sheets uh, are able to get away with not paying what they owe. Um, and if we actually had a well-staffed uh, and resourced IRS, uh, the federal treasury would be taking in a lot more tax revenue from large payers and corporations that owe money. Um, and we could actually lower tax rates on ordinary middle-class Americans. So this is something for the future. I hope we learn from our experience with like the malfunctioning IRS website that we get what we pay for and we should be willing to pay for a 21st century tax agency that is up to the challenge of serving the American people in a crisis. So with that, uh, thank you, uh, Kate. Thank you to everybody uh, who joined um, and obviously stay in touch with us if, uh, if you have any issues that, that come up with this or, or other uh, coronavirus related relief programs. I'll sign off. Thank you again.